Welcome back to the Impact Lounge. You are in the number one place to be for the Impact Wrestling fan. This is the Cool Factor Podcast. I'm your host, TW. And of course, with me is the main man, BQ. BQ, say what's up to the people. Yeah, what's up, everybody? Thanks for tuning in this week. I know last week I did this review show solo and it came out late and no one listened to it because it came out so late. You know, I promise we're working on we're working on something. We're, we're gonna get <laughs> we're, we're gonna get this handled, but um, <laughs> to let you know about this actual episode, uh, we're gonna do things a little bit different today. We're gonna switch it up. We're not gonna review Impact. I'm gonna keep it 100 with you guys. We thought this episode, and and so let let me not jump right into the negativity. The last several episodes, you guys heard me come on here and say, good episode, easy to consume. Main event was here before I knew it. This episode, in our opinion, was the shits. I thought this was the worst episode they had done since some of the empty arena stuff, which there was a lot of empty arena shows that I did not like, even a little bit. This is this is the worst. This was the worst episode I can freaking remember. And I've talked to a few people that kind of liked it. The main event was cool. There was nothing else good on that show. Nothing. We could get on here and review this show and complain about every single segment, every single match, and we wouldn't be wrong because the stuff that the reasons I don't like didn't like the episode, I, I can list them like very clearly and you'd be like, oh, okay, I, I see that. But people don't want to get us want to hear us get on here and just trash an entire episode. So we're just not even gonna talk about it. Yeah, I mean, listen, there there was some stuff on here that w- was cool, like your man's Steve Macklin. He had he went out there had a nice one with PCO. They had um, three bo- I- they had three botches in the first <coughs> minute of the match. <clears throat> yeah, three yeah, in yeah. a row. But we're not gonna talk about that. We're not gonna talk about that. You're right. So I, I I just said I got reasons for everything. <laughs> I, I'm just pointing that out. <laughs> but, but so like so so this, this was definitely like not. Uh, I mean, you know, look. The, the episode's out there. Y'all could see it. Y'all could not see it, whatever. But we had an idea to do something what we think is actually much more fun. Since this anniversary coming up this week, and the whole theme is celebrating uh, Impact 20 being the 20-year anniversary of Impact Wrestling, BQ and myself decided that we were going to give you our history of Impact Wrestling. Basically, we were going to go through some of our favorite things, our favorite memories of being fans of Impact Wrestling. So we have uh, we have a list of stuff we're gonna talk about, you know, some of our favorites. And what you guys can do in the chat is if you wanna drop in your own favorites, for example, I'm gonna ask BQ, you know, when did you start watching Impact or TNA? And he's gonna tell me when he started watching. And I'm gonna tell, tell you when I started watching. And then you can in the chat, go ahead, start, you know, just, just, you can take down all the questions and then you can fill in your responses let us know you know where y'all line up um with us you know what i mean the funny thing about it uh what 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 we discovered while we were kind of pre prodding in this is that as many of you know you can you can break the history of impact wrestling into two eras there's the 02 to 2013 era uh in 2013 you know bound for glory 2013 was the apex of tna like i don't even think that's questionable um and then um post that right like i mean <laughs> like you know in in particular you know you can really delineate uh, i believe it was the day in july when spike tv tweeted they were canceling impact wrestling and that's the post you know the the post spike tv era um and it's really it's it's just been it's been a completely different product in so many ways um but it's still here. It's still going strong and it still has fans. And there's plenty of fans. BQ is a fan who didn't come on until after what I would consider the, the peak of, of TNA. And so, <clears throat> so we got variety here of, of different angles from different years, um, you know, different, different, different uh, big moments. You know what I mean? A lot of the stuff that he might think, might might think of as as some of the big moments i might think of some stuff that's earlier 
or he might think of some stuff that's later. And so I think you guys will, will see there's a nice contrast in our points of view here. Um, so before we get started real quick, go ahead and hit that like button. Make sure you like this video. Uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button to so subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell so you get notified each and every time we drop some brand new fire content on this page. BQ, you ready? Ready to dive into this? Gia. All right, so here we go. So BQ, let's start off with, you know, M Impact Wrestling, I believe first came on the air in 2002. Um, but when did you actually start watching Impact or TNA? So this, this might be a surprise to some who maybe just started listening in the last year or two. You know, you see, I, I've got the lounge, you know, it's the number one place to be. Uh, and then, you know, some of you who have been with me since day one already kind of know this. I came on very late in the game. I started consistently watching TNA when they moved to pop TV. And it wasn't that I wasn't a viewer before, but it was very, like I would catch an episode when they're on Spike TV here and there. I would read some results on the internet. I used to read, uh, man, I can't remember. His name was something gray. But he had a website where he would just do Q&A mailbags and, mm. you know, lots of WWE questions on there, but lots of TNA ones too. So uh, following, you know, all his columns were uh, there was TNA stuff. I was able to get into some of the backstage stuff behind the scenes. Um, when they moved to Destination America, I, I didn't have the channel. So, uh, you know, so previous to that, I watch it. If I caught an episode, if I didn't, it wasn't really that big of a deal. I wasn't clueless to what was going on, but I wasn't really that interested because of the time I was actually a big WWE fan and I was very conditioned to what WWE did as a product. And when I would watch TNA, sometimes I'm like, I mean, I know they've been given a hard time for trying to be WWE light, but for me at the time, I would turn it on and I'm just like, this kind of looks like a knockoff wrestling show. Um, I was I just wasn't giving it the the a fair shake in all in all honesty, you know, because it's just like watching Impact now. You can't just turn on one episode every one once in a while and be like, okay, I like this product. Like you actually you usually got to commit to it a little bit, you know. And I I didn't give it that full commit uh, commitment when it was on Spike TV. And um, again, with Destination America, that's when I started taking a little more interest in it, but it just wasn't accessible for me. And at the time, I was so heavy into um, music and stuff and dating, to be honest, uh, that I just, I didn't make that extra time to really care. I didn't, I didn't get on the internet and watch, look at the streaming sites and see what they were doing on Destination America. I just, I didn't have the time didn't really feel it that important though uh, to watch it. Mm -hmm. But later, you know, as they moved on to pop TV, I had already decided I really, really wanted to follow it. And then when mm -hmm. they got to pop, it became a lot easier and um, went from there. So yeah. my knowledge, the TNA stuff is not great. And I'm sure you can tell I've been doing this podcast long enough. You can yeah. tell that a lot of my old knowledge isn't there. But it's only because I kind of watch it. It's kind of like NWA now, where mm -hmm. I watch it like once every two months, once every three months. Yeah. I'll order the pay per view. That's about it. I don't really know what they're doing episode to episode, but I'm not lost at the same time. Yeah. Um. No. Listen. I think that's actually great. Honestly, I, I think that like um, you know, for just on the internet, right? Like, there's such. There's a lot of, of diversity of thought and opinion out there. People just don't know how to like interact with each other. You know what I mean? <laughs> like people are like, oh, you don't know anything. Blah, 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 blah. But like, no, man, like it's good. I say this all the time, right? Like there's a 15 year old wrestling fan out there, right? Who has no idea that, you know, TNA was the laughing stock of, of the wrestling world and was Dave Meltzer's, you know, punching bag and like, you know what I mean? And, 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 and impact needs to be focused on trying to get that fan. You know what I mean? Cause I'm here. You know what I mean? Like I'm here. Don't worry about me. I don't need you to keep showing me the AJ Styles wrestle here and that the crowds were way better. And the production was way better. Like I don't, 
this is not helping your case. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, but there is like, but there's plenty of history there. So me, I started watching probably, gosh, I want to say like 07, 08, 09 for sure. Uh, definitely, definitely, I was definitely watching in 09 for sure. But it was, it was probably 08, 09 was when I started watching. Um, I just, uh, you know, it was, it was early after college for me. Um, I had went down to uh, North Carolina, played football for a year, and then I came. Then I then I was back in Connecticut, chilling, and I just found it one day. I just found it on TV, uh, um, um, on Spike TV, and I think uh, it just it really caught my eye. I the one thing I, I really loved about um, TNA Impact when I first saw it was the great production value. You know what I'm saying, like. It was well lit. There was a lot of fans. It was loud. Like, it's so funny because, like, I get annoyed when people are like, oh, I can't give Impact a chance. It just doesn't look blah, blah, blah. And it's funny because that's the exact same reason why I never got into Ring of Honor. And it's the exact same reason why I did get into Impact early because I was like, this looks like a respectable wrestling show. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> like, if I was a fan getting into wrestling today, like there's probably no way I would be watching Impact because I would just like pick pick it up, and be like, oh well, that's this isn't on par with this is not even close to can't compete with WWE. I don't, why do I want to see this? And I've said the same thing: is that yeah, they don't have the money that AEW has, but there's only four wrestling shows on TV. Well, five: SmackDown and Raw, NXT. But you know what? I'm not gonna say episode because they some have multiple shows like Rampage, all that shit. Right, right, but right. WWE's on TV. Uh, I'll throw NXT as a separate brand on there. AEW's on TV, and then there's Impact. Yeah. I don't know if MLW still has their little weird TV thing or wh- whatever they have, but <laughs> the three of those companies compared to the one compared to Impact, it's it just night and day. And yeah. granted, they don't have that kind of money, but that's that's a problem because you're gonna be compared to the other wrestling that's on TV, right. whether you know. Yeah. Whether, you know, the people watching don't know you don't have the money. It's like, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So let's let's, let's stay back in our way back machine here. So uh, what was the first thing that made you actually, once you discovered Impact Wrestling, right? What made you stick around as a fan? What what was the hook for you? All right. So the, the hook for me when I, you know, I said earlier that I decided I really, really wanted to follow was, you know, again, Destination America stuff. I couldn't really follow it the way I wanted to. Uh, so I missed a lot of the really good EC3 stuff, mm. but through whatever, whatever mess it, methods on the internet, I caught enough of it where I was really interested in him. Okay. Uh, I heard him do some podcast interviews and, but the one he, he did an interview with, with Jim Ross. And after that interview, I was just like, I got to start watching TNA. Okay. And wow. so I, I had ordered a couple of the pay-per-views while they were on destination America, not, yeah. not, um, you know, prior to me watching full time on pop and like the EC three stuff to me, I was just like, this dude is, is money. Like if he's the only wrestler in this promotion and I don't like a single other wrestler on there, I will tune in for this guy. Wow. I was, I was just That's locked in. Boy. Yeah. Uh, I, I found one of my old EC three shirts today in the garage. I had lost it for years. I could not find <laughs> this damn shirt. And, um, we're I'm cleaning out the garage because you know we're moving to Vegas next year and I was just yeah. like we can't wait till next year to to clean right so a year in advance we started cleaning and I found the damn shirt I'm like hell I just I couldn't believe I found it I thought yes. that thing was like gone forever but uh, EC3 100% hooked me and I was like I I have to watch going forward because of this guy I totally get that man and I think like it's 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 funny because like um. EC3 was definitely one of the guys who felt like he should have been like the flag bearer for, um, for, for the company. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, it's, you know, a lot of people in the wrestling world will be like, excuse me, a lot of, a lot of wrestling fans will <clears throat> hate on, you know, different companies for using ex WWE guys. But to me, that's just such a stupid thing. <clears throat> like, so so what are you faulting guys for going to take a chance to work at wwe you know i mean like it's the biggest you know opportunity anybody's ever going to get in wrestling it's the most money you'll ever make anywhere in wrestling so like 
why wouldn't you take a chance to go work for WWE? And does that mean no company should ever touch you because you worked at WWE at one point? Like, that's just, that's just stupid. Um, but in the case of EC3, I had never seen EC3 on uh, their NXT or developmental at that time. So he was a fresh face to me when he popped up on Impact. And um, yeah, man, it just, it just, it, it became clear early on that they were very invested in this guy and it became clear that he was very invested in them. I noticed he was doing like all the little shows, like the spin cycle and they had the impact wrestling podcast at the time he was doing that. And like, he was just doing everything he could to try to be the face of the company. This was around the same time at, at when, when the Miz was coming up in WWE and, um, and so people got to see that, right? Like I was having this conversation with people last night, like, you know, people in the wrestling business, they see how a Roman Reigns gets treated and they're like, okay, boom, you know, F all that, whatever dream and fantasy I had as a human professional in my job, I want to be treated like that. So what does he do? I need to do that. You know what I mean? So same thing. Like when you see the, the, the Miz, you know, ascend the ladder by doing all the extra stuff. Okay. If you're, if you're EC3, you're at a new company. I'm gonna do what the Miz did. Let me go do everything extra and just try to be the face of the company. And I think we could all see that from EC3 very early on. <clears throat> and yeah, man, like he's a guy who I definitely thought was, was going to, I thought he had an opportunity to, um, <clears throat> and, and to his credit, to the company's credit, they gave him every opportunity to be, you know, be all he could be uh, as, as the, as a, a, a face of impact wrestling. So it is what it is. I definitely wouldn't put that in like a, any sort of, you know, uh, sour grapes category. Um, and I still think that the reason he didn't become the, the John Cena of the company, which I mean, that's big praise right there, but just for lack of better terms, he didn't become that John Cena. I've said this a lot of times. It, I narrow it down to Bound for Glory 2015 when it was him and Lashley in the main event. And a good a good wrestling company with good booking and good creative, they know when it's time to put a belt back on somebody. Uh, they know, WWE knows when Brock Lesnar needs to hold a belt. But granted, it, granted, it seems like it's all the time. But, you know, when he loses a title, they, they know, okay, he can go without the title for so long, and then he needs it back. He needs something back. Um, you can look at, uh, you know, Britt Baker and AEW. Like, she she dropped her belt, and but they're kind of like, yo, Britt, Britt with the belt is money, so she wins this Owen Hart tournament, gets this bolt, belt for that, mm -hmm. you know? So, and there's a lot of other examples and instances. Those are the first couple to come to mind, and Bound for Glory rolls around. You know, he turned babyface at the top of the year. He needed to win that match. Like, he, he went long enough without the belt. He needed to win that match. But they wanted to keep... Well, no, I, I don't want to say they kept Lashley's dominance going because then he lost to Eddie Edwards the next, next night. But that was the, the turning point for EC3 that he had all this build-up to Bound for Glory. He even got... You know, I brought this up. He got speared during the pre-match announcement when Jeremy Borash is like, I'm in this corner. Lashley speared him out of the ring. <laughs> and then EC3 lost the mat. Like, <laughs> if there's ever a moment where you're like, yo, this guy needs to get his comeuppance because he just got embarrassed, it's that. He should have won at the end of the end of the night. Uh, I never and, know. Um, and, so, and he lost. <laughs> And no, man. the I, next I, night they could the <laughs> next night they could not get him back on track after that. Man. And then they try to heal uh, try to turn him back heel to recapture that magic, dude. They killed it. He had to win the title that night. And you and know what made, what made me feel that same way in a, just a different completely different situation when they did the thing with Mark Henry with the fake retirement with John Cena where he did he came out in the the salmon jacket yeah, and then they had a match of Money in the Bank, and and Mark Henry still lost. Yo, I was hot over that mm -hmm. shit. I was hot, and it was, and and then just, just like you said, then John Cena dropped the belt to Daniel Bryan the next month. I was like, bro, what the fuck, yo? Like, I could, like, you know which one I was hot about was when Jack Swagger <laughs> came back as a heel because he was the oh, world man. champion, right? And then it was just mm -hmm. like, 
well, he, they're never going to get the belt back on him. And then mm. he comes back repackaged with uh, Zeb Coulter oh. and w- was a good heel at first, man. And they that put him up against that was Del Rio, you know, Alberto El Patron, mm-hmm. who was bland as shit as a babyface yep. champion. Yep. And uh, it was the perfect opportunity to get him back in the main event picture. Lost. Yep. And after that, couldn't do di- that was actually a very interesting time i think like so sometimes when it comes to wwe uh, we're getting off off of the tna impact history but like <laughs> wwe sometimes they kind of they fumble the opportunity when it comes to mainstream press and i think like that one had some elements to it you know like the glenn beck element and all that stuff that was getting a little um it was like it was like crossing over into like potential like um you know, like in the in, in the eighties, like you always have the wrestlers who would like uh, call out the local radio jock, and you know, like he'd be yeah. like trash talking, and it'd be somewhere where you know you you're not sure if he's all the way in on this, but the wrestlers like, hey, he should be in on it, but if he's not, he's just a radio jock, so whatever. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I felt like that that situation had some elements of like. Uh, okay, well, he's talking nasty to us. And then I'm sure they kind of approached him and was like, hey, let's do some business. And he's like, I'm not working with you stupid wrestling people. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, that one got that one got funny. But yes, I think they definitely missed a, a, a good opportunity with um, the Jack Swagger, Zeb Coulter thing. All right, back to our, our list of Impact and why we loved Impact uh, for the history that we've been watching it. All right. Um, who was your? Oh wait, no. I said, what was, what was the thing that made you stick around? And I and you said EC3. For me, the thing that made me stick around was all the different stuff that I was seeing. I liked the six sided ring. I liked the 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 two entrance tunnels that were coming up, where the bad guys come from one side, good guys come from the other side. Like I just I like that. They they would do different stuff. They had like Curry Man and Shark Boy and like. They weren't afraid to be really silly, uh, you know, at times. And then, you know, a lot of stuff I liked, like, you know, like Sting and and, <clears throat> and, and, and Kurt Angle. Like, there was a lot to like uh, when, when when I first started watching Impact in like 08, 09. So, um, yeah, I was, there was, there was a lot to keep me around. Um, okay. Who was your favorite act when you started watching now this is you already said EC three, um, but if you had to expand beyond beyond EC three, who was your favorite act when you started? Because you are we know it was EC three, so EC three has that place. But since you already used EC three, give me another act that really was your favorite when you started watching. So um, so yeah, I said EC three. I also got a cave- caveat to that that when I was off and on watching. You know, Taryn, you know, I was a big Taryn Terrell fan. Hello. So she's she's one of the only reasons <laughs> I can actually stomach NWA at the moment. Um, I liked uh, I liked Beer Money a lot. Now, when you talk Beer about the Pop Money. TV era, they didn't That's last good. too long because because yeah. uh, you know Bobby Roode Roode took off. I liked the Wolves very very much. When uh, when Davey got hurt, I mean, I know that was. In, in a sense, the best thing for Eddie Edwards' career. Mm. But I I missed watching the Wolves, and I missed that we never really got the Wolves back yeah. after that. So I, I like the Wolves a lot. At the yeah. time that I started getting heavy in, the, the knockouts division was on a big downward spiral. They had about three or four, I've mentioned this too, three or four girls in the division that actually didn't even wrestle. Mm-hmm. You know, it was like Ali rosemary uh raquel and maria canellis mm-hmm. you know um <laughs> it was just like they were they were just in a bad spot back then so i, I can't even say the, the knockouts were a big part but um yeah i, I was definitely into the, the wolves a lot uh the, the tag team wrestling in general like i kind of enjoyed um gosh i'm trying to, i'm trying to think some of the other people those well, are those are the ones that stand out to me though. But um around yeah. that time there was a really good tag team scene. I remember and you uh, like Drake, Hardys too. You like Drake, and sorry. Wolves and 
Oh yeah, yeah. the the Hardys yeah, right. and Wolves and uh and I think it was the Dudleys. They did a full metal mayhem match, and I was like, oh my god! I remember them. They did that, that match in, in I New York, say it was right? Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. It was either it was either New York or I think it was Bethlehem. The but Bethlehem. I, did they do multiple shows at Bethlehem? Oh, they did a bunch. Okay. And um, and I just I just remember watching that match and going, oh my god. I feel so bad these dudes are doing this to their bodies in front of no people. <laughs> and like, <laughs> um, but it was some amazing work. It really was. <clears throat> um, so for me, I would say my favorite act when I started watching was probably the beautiful people. <laughs> um, but, you know, not, not for like the pure sex appeal of it. It was just, to me, the beautiful people were a great example of like TNA trying stuff. Like, when I first noticed the act, it was just like, it was like when it, when it was first coming together, it was just like, you know, Velvet Sky and, and, and uh, Angelina Love. And they were, you know, just, they were cutting promos, but they were being like kind of suggestive about it. And then they, but again, you just, you could tell they were trying stuff and developing it. And it was just, it was fun. I, and I, I enjoyed it. Um, but there was just, there were so many things about, uh, uh, about Impact I enjoyed. Um, I, uh, they had Sting. Another one I really loved was uh, Blueprint Matt Morgan. I was a big fan of Matt Morgan. I thought he was a guy that really had all the tools to be uh, a, a big, uh, a, a big time player um, for you know just for M- impact, just like kind of a a hood ornament type of player. Um, all right. So, what was the first Impact pay per view you watched or ordered? So as I've said a few times, I watch on and off. I, I didn't watch any of the early pay-per-views at all. Um, episodes here and there, yes. Pay-per-views, no. The first actual pay-per-view I got, though, was Slammiversary 2014. So this was this was the Destination of Eric America era. Um, I remember they had Robbie E versus... Uh, uh, Jesse Goddard's on there. Uh, I think it was a slam, uh, King of the Mountain match. I want to say Jarrett won the King of the Mountain title in the main event. Could be, I could be wrong. I'm trying to think what else was on there. I don't remember the show like real, real well, to be honest with you. But, yeah. but that was the first one. Uh, I do remember, though, uh, that I did enjoy it from top to bottom. Okay. I, you know, I truly did. And, uh, I remember the map, the graphics for the paper. It was like gray. I'm, I'm trying mm-hmm. to think who the hell else was on the card, but, but I, I, I enjoyed it quite a bit. Um, and that's when I kind of knew I was like, I want to, I'm going to start getting the pay-per-views at least, you know, um, this is before I even knew they're coming to pop TV and that I'd be able to watch them. Uh, but that was, that was the first one where I was like committed to it. I was like, I, I really need to start following this product. Yeah. Um, so for me, it was Bound for Glory 2009. Um, I remember I ordered that because Matt Morgan was getting the title shot against Kurt Angle. And this is a time when, listen, your boy was not trying to come up off that uh, 20, 30, 40 bucks for that pay-per-view every month. Okay, boy was not trying to spend that money. Uh, so I was, <laughs> I had to be invested to buy a pay-per-view. And uh, I was, man, I was looking forward to it and, you know, unfortunately matt morgan didn't win as we all know but uh yeah but they sold me on that pay-per-view it was it was it looked like you know it was going to be his come up and i was excited for it man i was excited but didn't you know who i thought was going to hook me in and didn't was um mr anderson Hmm. so mr kennedy in wwe was far and away my favorite wrestler oh wow i was obsessed with this dude i I don't like how that sounds, but I, <laughs> I loved everything he did. I was like, he's, he's going to be a, a star. Mm-hmm. Um, and then he got hurt and then he came yeah. back. I remember, dude, he lost the money in the bank. I'm going to go back yep. to the WWE part. Uh, Cause he was hurt and he had this match with edge that lasted like 10 seconds. Yeah. Then he got speared after the bell. Cause Eric, dude, I almost, I was like almost crying, dude. <laughs> I was so emotionally invested in that character. Um, like Edge jumped him on the way to the, they were both healed. Yeah. Edge jumped yeah. him on the way the ring beat the shit out of him. And then the mm. bell rang and he speared him, made him look like a fool. <laughs> so he got hurt. And then he came back, had a match. 
and then he got fired. Yeah. So then he goes to TNA, and I saw that the debut was really really awesome moment. Mm. And I just didn't like him. Mm. I, I just didn't, man. Like, I it wasn't the same for me. I, um, no. I'm sure there's a lot of people who are like, yo, his character was way better in TNA. But mm. I just, it, it didn't hit me the same way. I was just like, I'm not. And yeah. then Kurt Angle is another who uh, was my favorite during the Attitude Era. Yeah. Um, and I mean, he, again, far and away, my favorite goes to TNA and I, I'm, I don't discount the matches he put on and everything, but it just, mm-hmm. again, just wasn't the same because I liked funny. I liked borderline funny Kurt Angle okay. that he had in WWE. And then when he yeah. came over to TNA, when he was so serious, man, I just yeah. was, I couldn't connect with him the same way. See, I'm the exact opposite. Like I, I, um, I loved the stuff Kurt Angle did in TNA. Like, I was like, man, like, to, to me, Kurt Angle, like, having Kurt Angle in a lot of ways really legitimized uh, TNA in the eyes of a lot of fans because he wasn't just there, you know, trying to, um, it, you know, just 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 have a match and be out, you know what I mean? Uh, right. Just come in and get your title and be out. Like, he wasn't like a lot of, you know, ex-WWE guys who come in there and, and – you know, are just there kind of to collect the check. Like he was, he was all in, he was putting in bangers. Um, He was in with the character work and, you know, he wasn't doing the silly stuff, but for me, that was good. Like, again, I thought that set the tone for what the wrestling show was. You know what I mean? Like this mm-hmm. is Kurt Angle. He's, you know, he's all the superlatives in the world and he's going to tear your head off if you get in the ring with him. You know what I mean? I'm like, okay, there you go. And that is something I, I don't discount the matches and everything. That's just not what I'm saying. And I know that I, I talk about not wanting a lot of humor in wrestling, but I always appreciate people who are legitimately funny. Yeah. And I just miss that side to them. I miss that like kind of lighthearted yeah. side to them. Um, but that that's something that the current product needs is that next, they need the next Kurt Angle and the next Gail Kim. Those, those people who come over and they're, they're they don't choose a, you know AEW they choose impact yeah. not I talked to AEW they didn't sign me so oh now I'm going to choose impact like no they yeah. need they need those girls or yeah. guys whatever on on those levels mm-hmm. that come over one day and be like yo I want to be part of something different here um it, it's kind of like the um like Joe Johnson in the NBA when he left uh yeah. Phoenix and he went to Atlanta and Atlanta sucked and people were like what are you doing right it's like I want to be the man, yep. you know, <laughs> yeah. and, and he made them very respectable for yeah. years. Um, so I, I do think they need that. I think they need that guy that's going to come and say, yo, we're not, we're going to choose impact over AEW. We're going to choose, yeah. you know, the girl who's going to be, the, you know, Gail Kim. Yeah. Like we still don't have that Gail Kim type, type of gal who just came over and like, right. You know, T- Tessa Blanchard could have, but we're not going to talk about that right now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but yeah. <laughs> um all right so let's see so we were on the we were on the pay-per-view um okay so how about this what was one concept or gimmick that really caught your eye uh in your early days of impact fandom so i think one of the things i always appreciated um, throughout the years, even when I wasn't an avid watcher, was just the ability to to do things different. And people used to ride on ride them a lot, like, oh my God, all these gimmick matches, everything's a gimmick match, but then AEW does more gimmick matches than any wrestling company ever has. Right. And no one seems to care. <laughs> so it was just one of those shots that TNA people would take. Granted, like today's product, I think they use the D- no DQ street fight shit like way too often as, you know, like Cornette would say, lazy booking. Yep. But there there was a period, we talked about this on our last pod together. There was a period where they, they would just just try different things, you know? They they weren't afraid to, to say, how can we present the product different than what everyone sees on TV on, and, you know, it's like they did the reverse battle royal, you know. I mean, yeah. I know that wasn't good. Um, you know, they they did this shit where um, I remember Tara had, was trying to get her tarantula back or something, and they had some 
Jeremy Borash was doing some kind of game show type shit with them. I, I don't remember what it was. Yeah. But but I'm just saying, like they they would just oh, the not be cycle? afraid to feast the fire what's, stuff. What's that? The spin cycle? Is that what? Do you no, no, that? no, no, no. That's not oh. what I mean. It was actually on the show. I, I want to. Oh. Oh yeah, I think that was Feast of Fire when they would open the case. Well, no, I, I was just saying, be using Feast of Fire as an example, but there was, it was an episode, man, where Tara had her like tarantula and she was trying to get it back, and like, it was like two or three knockouts that they did something, and they and they they were presented what was whatever was under the box or under or something like that. I, I sound like a fool right now trying to trying to recall um, this but but there was a lot of stuff like that though there was yeah. a lot of stuff like that where it's just like but that i when daphne had a sex like do a lap dance or something like strip tease in the rink she lost right 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 <laughs> it was so funny she was like so begrudgingly you know yeah you know, i was like oh my god this is the least sexy thing i've ever seen but that was the point right you know what i mean right um it, but they would they were known for me they were known for doing stuff like that all the time, right? Stuff just like, this is different. It's wacky. It's weird, but it's not like hokey. You know what I mean? Uh, I, and even if it was hokey, it's like, it's okay because we're trying to gain the market share. Like when I see WWE do things that are just bad, to me, I don't excuse that because you're the biggest, richest wrestling company. You got the best roster in the world, uh, the best wrestlers in the world. You got a staff of writers and the person who runs your company is, you know, the most effective promoter in the history of wrestling. You shouldn't put on bad TV, period. Just, it just, sorry, it should not happen. Yeah. So, uh, but I, I accept it more from, you know, companies who are figuring it out. All right. But as uh, far as my, I didn't actually give oh, you an answer. Oh, you did? <laughs> so, <laughs> The concept that I always thought was really cool, they did it on several one one night onlys. I can't say it was ever good, but was the uh, the Joker's Wild. I thought the concept of yes. having a random tag team partner was really cool. Now WW, I mean WCW did this one uh, one point in the in the I think it was the late eighties. The last time I remember them doing it, I think it was a Halloween Havoc or something like that. Um, that was the first time I'd seen something like that. And I just thought it was a really awesome concept, but TNA didn't really pull the trigger on it. It was always like a very like one night only type of things. And one night only at one point was just a goofy show for, for the fans, but it never was tied into anything serious. You know, they did a destination X where Braxton Sutter won the, he, he won the X and got a future title shot. Like he never even got the title shot because it was just one night only were like a joke, you know? Um, you know, they were wrestling for a hundred thousand dollar briefcase and crap like that, you know, but, um, even though it's like, I think the wolves team together, like three in a row or something like that, like they, there was some of it that was stupid. Like the, the, the execution of it was really bad. And the, the last one that they did do was a horrible show, but just the concept of it was something that I enjoyed. I enjoyed it enough to, you know, give a bad show my time, but you know, but that stuff, you know, the lockdown stuff was cool. Lethal lockdown, you know, they've definitely had some good gimmick matches over the years. You know, Fist, Feast of Fire would at least get you invested in it. They they tried to do a knockoff race for the case one time, and that was in the history of me covering Impact, the worst episode I've ever seen. Um, <laughs> and there's not even a close second place. Maybe maybe this episode we just watched, but um, but yeah, just they, they did a lot of a lot of cool stuff, and and. and we talked about it a couple of weeks ago. It's missing from the product right now. Just taking that chance to do something different. Uh, they do they do stuff different in other ways, but I mean, from the wrestling standpoint, like the uh, we talked about that revolver match they did for the X Division Championship. Like that was the best gimmick match they have done in forever. Right. You know, we haven't seen it since. <laughs> no. <sighs> All right. Uh, um, so for me, uh, a concept or gimmick that really caught my eye was the Bound for Glory series. If you guys remember this, um, then like you're going, we're going back, uh, uh, man. Oh, again, 08, 09, you know, all the way up to 2013. Um, and they would basically have a tournament over the summer leading up to Bound for Glory. And this was cool because this is a time when they were trying to like be on tour. So they would be going, 
to like different, you know, towns or whatever. And you would get points for for not only winning, but how you win. I think it was like 10 points for a pinfall, you know, like, I don't know, like four points for a disqualification, like seven points for a submission, something like that. And, um, and the fans would have like these cards in the, in the audience. So they would hold them up. Like, you know, if you got the, if you got the, the, the win, they'd hold up like a 10. Um, and like, it just, it was cool, man. It just, it just gave the, the, the whole show, like a running concept, a flow to it. And I liked it, man. It just, it was, it was, it was, it was, it was fun. It made all the stories matter, right? I like, you know, I like long running plot lines. You know what I mean? So if you're like, okay, hey, we've got a tournament going from now until October. Um, and th- that makes everything from now until October matter, right? Because because the, the winner of this tournament is going to get the title match at the pay-per-view in October. Like so so again, it just it it makes sense. It makes sense. I don't know why they've abandoned this series. I do know why they abandoned it. They abandoned it because it's basically a ripoff of the G1. <laughs> but <laughs> um, but who cares? Like wrestling companies copy each other all the time. Like, just do something fun. That, that's so the Battle for Glory series. I was a big fan of that. Brilliant. And then they watered it down quite a bit by the time um like the destination of america version of it was really bad yes uh the fans didn't even know what they were watching the ones in the arena they they didn't know they were actually watching the the bound for glory series no you know what i'm sorry that was i'm, I'm thinking of the world title series they did yes that was, yeah that was the one that was i was even good. mad that they called it that because yeah. i thought that was too close to the bound for glory series and that was the time when like you know, Impact was just in a really bad place. Like they were literally like taping to taping on if this is going to keep going or not. You right. know what I mean? Yeah. And um, that's just that's rough. That's rough. That's a rough place. That's a rough place to be as a company. That's a rough place to be for talent. You know what I mean? Like, you know, that's when Dixie Carter was out here robbing Peter to pay nobody. <laughs> she was robbing did, uh, peter to pay her amex bill <laughs> the, the the dixie carter uh one of her big announcements was that the knockouts were gonna compete in the world title series oh my god right and so it was it was and this is the time when i was like because of all the tna drama i was like i i i couldn't turn away from the dirt sheets because they were like you know all the doom and gloom felt so real it yeah. felt so accurate, you know what I mean? And, mm-hmm. and so, like, you know, I heard these rumors that at this one set of tapings, they just taped a shit ton of matches because they don't know when they're coming back to produce TV again. <laughs> and I was like, God damn, bro. Like, right. that, just, that was ugly, man. And it, oh, don't get me started. It's, it was a dark time. Dark time. <laughs> uh, why am I still here? <laughs> All right. So what was your favorite moment as an impact fan this can be in this can be anything just first thing that comes to mind when i say what was your favorite moment in your history as an impact fan so this is really easy for me the the great war match at bound for glory 2017 i was there at the in the house and it was by far i, I always say this nwa in power was the most fun i've had at a pay-per-view it overall but this match was the most fun i ever had for like a singular match yeah and granted it was kind of like cinematic and stuff but the being in the arena for it and they were you know we're just watching on the big screen and uh, especially when they showed you know hardy uh, oh, there's two hardys matt and abyss fighting in front of the universal studio sign <laughs> I popped so big because in the early days of my podcast, I was like, why don't they ever wrestle outside in the park? And uh, it makes sense. And then Vince Russo ended up saying the same thing at one point too. Right, so I used right. to listen to him real heavy. He's like, I don't know why they don't leave the arena. Right. Um, they could do really good television in the park. Um, but I remember just yelling and standing and clapping and just laughing and, and just being so into it. Uh, and right. you know, obviously they brought it back into the arena, but 
it was it was just the most fun I ever had at a live event for for one particular match. Uh, I'm so so happy to be here for it. And I've seen a lot of stuff live. Like I've I've seen the Undertaker live. I've seen Brock Lesnar many times live. I've seen some uh, good sports moments live. Uh, but but this was just like one of my just greatest memories as a fan in general yeah. going to something. I just I've seen I saw David Copper David Copperfield fly. Wow. Like this motherfucker said, I've wanted to fly my whole life, and he this fool just f- started flying. Uh, <laughs> and then he's like, just so you know, there's no strings. He in, in, you know encapsulates himself in glass, and he's just flying in the glass, dude. So yeah, I, that's, yeah. I know it's random as shit, but I've seen a man <laughs> fly before. But um, but yeah, that's great war stuff, man. I just I had a blast watching it, and it. I was recently thinking, man, I, I kind of miss the broken characters. There was a point where they start getting a little cheesy, but if you if you look at the early Matt Hardy when yeah, he was man. more of a darker character before he started getting trying to be funny, mm-hmm. it was good. At first, remember, like when he when, at first when he debuted that character, people were like this is the death of TNA, like this is how they're going down. <laughs> but but really, it's one of those things in retrospect. Retrospect, you look back on, and you're like. This was some good shit. Yeah, but, um, <laughs> I had a I had a blast for that. Yeah, yeah. Um, for me, I'll say my favorite moment as an Impact fan. Um, it had to be going back to when Austin Aries won the world title from Bobby Roode. Um, it, it, not just when Austin Aries won the world title from Bobby Roode, but so the he had this great build right so bobby Roode was having this historically long title run right i think the longest title run in impact history and um and then you get austin aries who just rises up through the x division he's killing everybody he's like you know unstoppable then he finally gets his shot at the world title and he wins and then this is the moment that was great for me on that first episode of impact austin aries goes out there and he cuts a promo where he you know basically says holding this title makes me the best wrestler in the world it makes me the number one guy in the business and to me that was the first time i'd ever heard anybody from impact say that and i just loved it i loved it i was like yo i'm enjoying this product i like this product i like this show and i'm like this dude is like, he's, he's, he's doing what everybody from impact should be doing. Like saying like, no, this is, is the place to be. You know what I mean? And like, again, you're not going to magically be as big and rich as WWE, but like, you need to believe that this is the thing. Like again, AEW fans believe that their product is better than WWE's. Um, you know, uh, the, the, and that's the confidence that you should have, right? Like at one point, WCW fans believed that their product was better than WWE's. And so like, that just makes it fun for everybody involved, man. You know what I mean? Like right now, like you see Impact, you know, willingly plays, you know, a doormat to AEW at every chance they get, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And so, um, so that moment with Austin Aries cutting that promo saying, I'm the best because of this title. Like that was a great moment as a, as a fan for me. It was fun. You had to be there. Um, all right. And so we'll wrap it up with this. Who is an impact all time. Great. That doesn't get the credit he or she deserves. I would, uh... I would personally go with Bobby Lashley. So I know he had a couple earlier runs that didn't, that didn't go really well, you know, didn't go very well for him. And then he became, you know, a, a, I don't know if they would call him a triple crown champion at the time, but he was holding all the belts at once. And he had just one of the most dominant world title runs where it was also legitimate. Like it felt it didn't feel forced down our throats. It felt like well, the roster really can't beat him. Um, and and some of the feuds he he had, even even his promo work. People always said, "Oh, his promos suck." Like, I, I I thought he carried himself very very well, and 
I thought it was a big loss for them. It, it was a loss that I didn't think they could replace. They at the time felt that I know you're going to love this. At the time, they felt that Brian Cage was going to be able to step into the Bobby Lashley spot. You know, which <sighs> I admire them at least thinking that because you know I, I pointed out recently when uh, W. Morrissey left, I said who steps into his spot. They don't have anyone to even like try to put in his spot. You know, at least, at least, uh, you know, TNA at the time was like, you know, back then was like, okay, we're losing Corgan, but here's our replacement. This is who we're going to, you know, right. who we're going to run with. Uh, that didn't totally pan out. Um, but, but I think we don't look back at his time fondly enough. And, with impact social medias where they like to let you know who used to be in the company. They don't talk, they don't post the Bobby Lashley stuff. They'll post it. If he's wrestling Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania, you know, or something like that. They're, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. by the way, Bobby Lashley was in our company. That was still the best work of his career. You know, that, that title run that he had. Um, and I was there when he lost Eddie Edwards and, I remember jumping out of my seat like I could I could not believe the ref just counted three. You know, it wasn't the way a lot of fans of the time wanted Bobby to, to go down. Right. But I think the company wanted to do it in a surprise fashion rather than do it at a pay-per-view with a build where people knew he was going to lose type of thing. So that's why EC3 didn't beat him. Um, but yeah, I, I really don't think they, they look backly, back, backly, back fondly at that time time enough yeah um, yeah no I, I think that's a great pick i think that's a great pick lashley had a phenomenal run um in my opinion he's one of the best uh tna champions of, of all time and here's the thing like for me you know wrestling uh will never change in from the from the aspect of like it's all it's all about believability it's all about believability you know what i mean that's why like you know you seen that viral clip of ricochet and will osprey doing like 97 flips before they start their match yeah. and like people are like oh my god this is the greatest thing i've ever seen and i'm like yo man like but like <laughs> what where does that fit into a fight so anyway but it just it, it but so but i just think that like you know bobby lashley right like he is a credible uh choice to play your world champion for any wrestling show, right? Like, period. Hard stop. He's doing it right now in WWE. You know, like, people, I don't expect him to beat Roman Reigns, but nobody would really, you couldn't, nobody would be like, him? You know what I mean? If he be, mm -hmm. if Bobby Lashley beat Roman Reigns, nobody could scratch their head but so much. You know what I'm right. saying? So, um, so like yeah man bobby lashley he had great runs as champion I, I was a big fan of Lashley's run as champion and you're right he does not get mentioned as uh as an all-time impact great and he should because he was he 100 percent was um for me somebody who's an all-time great that i think doesn't get the credit they deserve would be christian cage and i'm gonna say christian cage because when i first found impact tna impact when i was flipping through the dial seeing christian cage was one of the things that got me to stay just seeing this guy who was um you know a small fish in wwe but got to a smaller pond and had a chance to shine i was like yo this is dope when i first saw impact it was you know christian with uh aj and tom co as his goons and i was like man this is good I, I was enjoying this and i thought christian did a great job in that and just like he brought me over um he was one of the things that solidified me into staying uh, and he made the product look more legitimate by being on that show i'm sure he brought a lot of fans over by being that too they gave him a chance to be a world champion and i thought he knocked it out of a park and that's why i actually thought he was you know probably the next best thing to kenny omega to get that for josh alexander to get that title back so christian cage would be my vote for the uh you know, for the all-time great that doesn't get the credit they deserve. Yeah, and, I, and I, I caught some of his stuff as well over the years, and he was one of my favorite wrestlers. He's one of my favorite wrestlers now, always has been. So, yeah, they, they, they need a – that's another guy. Impact – or TNA needs – I mean, now they're Impact. 
now I'm getting all confused. <laughs> That's what Impact needs now. You know, I, I mentioned the Kurt Angle, the Gail Kim, someone who chooses Impact. They also need a guy like that who, you know, in the WWE, he didn't get that. He just didn't get that push. You know, he won the world title, and then I think he dropped it the next night, you know, right. to Randy yeah. Orton. It was just like, okay, we're going to give him the belt, but he's going to lose it. Uh, yeah, they just never – so yeah, they they never <laughs> felt he was he was worthy, and that there's some guys on WWE now that are like, uh, the company doesn't think that they're worthy, yeah, and they need a guy like that to be like, I'm gonna go here here and be a top guy, someone right. that the fans, uh, not not like Angle who was already top guy, but someone who the fans were like, we wanted this guy to be a top guy, the company didn't agree, um. So he's going to go to come to Impact and 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 work that main event scene. The best example I can give current day is Cesaro. Mm. You know, like if he were to come over, you know that he would be elevated to the top, and people would probably tune in to see that because they wanted to see him at the top. He just never had that opportunity. A Cesaro you know, Josh he, Alexander match. Somebody going to lose some teeth. teeth. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And if he went to, if he goes to AEW, which he probably will, he's not he's not gonna be the top guy there, so it's not gonna happen. Right. He's gonna be in that like Jay Lethal area stage, mm. you know what I mean? But um but a guy like that, if he came to impact, I think I think that would be cool too. Oof. All right, man. I think that's a that's a fun little uh slam anniversary. Um not not preview, but like in honor of slam anniversary, uh BQ and TW's you know, Impact 20, our, our, our big hits from our history as Impact fans. Again, like I said earlier, guys, let us know what you thought uh, of, of, of our takes and our memories. And also feel free to add your own your own memories uh, in, in the comments section below. Uh, we're going to get back to chatting, uh, chatting at you guys in your comments soon. But if nothing else, we'll definitely reply to your comments in the comment section and we'll chat it up down there. Uh, BQ. Let the people know where they can find you out here in these social media streets. At BQ Speaks on Twitter. And then uh, don't forget to check out at the Impact Lounge on Instagram. You can check it out on Twitter as well uh, and on Facebook. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And you can find me at TW Talking About on the pretty much any social media. Um, you can also follow my podcast page at Talking About Pod. Bro, my pod has been dry I've, I've had a lot going on just so you guys know my real life job i've been very very busy i uh, we have a lot of very uh important sports properties that are in their play uh playoff seasons right now and so your boy has not had a minute to breathe so i haven't put out a pod in a minute but the pod is coming back uh long strong and down to get the friction on um so everybody go to the talking about pie page right now and hit that subscribe button for your boy and show me some love um so but listen like i asked you guys before you know make sure you like comment rate and subscribe but if you really want to help the show out the best thing you could do is tell a friend to tell a friend let's bring more people into the conversation for bq i'm tw peace